Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's another day. It's another opportunity to worship the Lord. Thank you for coming. And I would love to welcome those who are following online. May God bless you as well. So I'm going to request you to stand as we worship together this morning. Thank you. So let me open with a word of prayer and uh, we start our worship this morning. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Uh, we just want to praise your name. We just want to bless your name. As we worship you this morning, I pray that your presence fill in this place. And uh, just come do what you want to do in a midst, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest way, my heart is trust in Jesus' name. Cross the Lord. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love. Through the storm, He is born, Lord of all. One more time, Christ alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems yeah. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every eye, yes, stormy game, my anchor holds with me. My ankle, my ankle holds with me. Cross alone, cross alone, cornerstone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love. Christ alone, oh, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Let's sing cross alone. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Can we sing with 
our voices. Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love through the storm. He Lord of all. Thank you, Lord. You are the cross solid that our faith is built on. You are our foundation. You are our rock we stand on. Thank you, Jesus, for being our faithful God. In Jesus' name. I me. And I your will cover me, cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and turn the strong. So with you above the storm, Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are. One more time, when oceans rise, when the oceans rise, in time. I will so I will so with you above the soul Father you are king over the flood I will be still know you are God find rest my soul I rest my soul in the cross alone, in the cross alone. Know His power, know His power. Oh yes, in the quiet name, in trust. Oceans rise and turn us roar. Oh, yes. I will soar in you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still. No, you. One more time. Chase when the oceans rise in time does roll. Our soul, I will so be you above the soul. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be, I will be still. No, you. up just our hands one more time and take two minutes just to speak to our Lord tell him what's in your heart tell him how much you love him he's here he's listening to us thank you Lord we will be still and know you are God we praise your name Lord this morning give your praise Lord you are our faithful God you've been so good to us we just want to praise you this morning. Oh, fire is my soul <laughs> in Christ's love. No, his power. No. Our 
voices. Where the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king, go over the flood, and I will be still. I will be still, know you are God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will be still and know you are God. Amen. We are going to sing a song. Uh, this is my second time or third time to, re- to lead this song in the church. So, but I will try to start. You guys, you, you will follow. So, and I will um, ask you to have to give us some support with our hands as, as we sing this song. <laughs> so, God bless you. So, the song goes. Arise, my soul. Remember thee. He took my sin and he buried it. No longer I who live. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I work out to see the light. No, I won't boast, but in the cross that saved my soul, for as is lost, the grief, the grief of fear has no hold on me, well, so No longer I who live Now Jesus lives in me For I was dead in sin But I work out to see the light Here we go! Thank you so much! Let me hear you sing louder. Oh, all of this for your glory. One more time, all this for your glory. Oh, all of this for your glory. All of this for your glory. Oh, all of this for your glory. One more time, all this for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, all of this for your glory. No longer I will live. Now Jesus lives in me. Oh, I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. No longer. lives in me for I was dead in sin but I woke up to see the light one more time listen to this oh all of this for your glory yeah lift up your voices
thank you so much father we thank you all we do our lives it's just for your glory we live our life we live today is your life is the life that honors you is the life that gives you glory because you gave your life for us in jesus name amen may you may be seated god bless you Thank you, Nice and Band, for leading us in worship this morning. Today I'm going to pray through scripture, um, and the German martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer reminds us that when we pray the scripture, we are praying with Jesus. It is only with Jesus that we can enter into the presence of God. So today I'm going to pray through Psalm 145, a psalm of praise by David. Let's pray together. We will exalt you, our King and God, and praise your name forever and ever. We will praise you every day. Yes, we will praise you forever. Great are you, Lord. You are most worthy of praise. Not one of us can measure your greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. Lord, we pray for our children and youth as they learn about you in children's and student ministry, and mostly in their homes. Help us to keep our homes centered on you, God. We pray for those students who are graduating this year. Lord, we pray that they will trust fully in you as they move out into the next season of their lives and live their lives to honor you. Lord, we, reflect, we will reflect on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. We will proclaim your greatness. For the good things that happen to expand your kingdom this week, we praise you. We pray for all those who came closer to you on their spiritual journeys. We pray for those who are baptized and those who are considering baptism, that your hands of protection will cover them and they will not fear things that may cause them to stumble in their walk with you, but overcome them by the power of your Holy Spirit living within them. Lord, everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. You are merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. Thank you, Lord, for your patience with us as we continue to fail at keeping you first in our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be diligent in keeping our spiritual disciplines of prayer, Bible reading, worshiping with our church family, and sharing the good news of Jesus with others. Lord, you are good to everyone. You shower compassion on all your creation. All of your works will thank you, Lord, and we, your faithful followers, will praise you. We will speak of the glory of your kingdom and give examples of your power. We will tell about your mighty deeds and about the ma majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. Lord, we thank you for the life of James Fletcher and the knowledge that he is with you now. He knows the glory of your kingdom. We pray for his wife, Cheryl, and his children, that you would be their comfort as they grieve his loss. Lord, you always keep your promises, and you are gracious in all you do. You help the fallen and lift those bent beneath their loads. Lord, we pray for those going through challenging times this week. Thank you for this promise that you will help them. Would you continue to be their strength and provision through these difficult days. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. Lord, we pray for the provision for those who are hungry or thirsty. Touch their hearts, touch the hearts of your people to be a generous people, giving of what you've provided to meet the needs of the poor. Lord, you are righteous in everything you do. You are filled with kindness. You are close to all who call on you. 
to all who call on you in truth. You grant the desires of those who fear you. You hear cries for help and rescue them. You protect all those who love you and you destroy the wicked. Lord, we pray for those people who are caught in war, where they live in fear of what will happen to them and their loved ones. Prince of Peace, bring your peace to the world. We will praise you, Lord, and may everyone on earth bless your holy name forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I call it the clacker. I think it is called the clacker. Okay. Do you have everything lined up for this fall? Do you, you have a place to stay? Sure. You're, you're moving. Yeah, I am moving. I'm going to UBC to study biomedical engineering <laughs> in their faculty That's... of applied sciences. Okay, and you're what? You're hoping to like run into movie stars? Like that's <laughs> yeah. As a as a videographer, I'm gonna okay. do that. I guess. I thought editors do that. Oh, maybe you are, are you the videographer? I'm the videographer. Oh, oh, I'm the editor. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Clack it. Hi, my name is Adiola Desalu, and this summer I will be graduating from Old Skona Academic. Um, yeah, so this fall I plan to study biomedical engineering at University of British Columbia. And something I hope that the church can help me with this fall is just prayers because I will be moving to a new environment and meeting lots of new people. So yeah, should I go again? You can do one more clock <laughs> if you want. And then I start. Well, you put it down and then you start. Okay. Hey Steel Heights, my name is Beryl Ramasasa. And this year I'm graduating from Austin O'Brien High School. In the fall, I'm looking forward to upgrading. One of the ways that Steel Heights can support me this fall is to pray for me. Cut. Great. That'll that helps me kind of uh, cut. just. Well, I'm not gonna cut there. Cut. Cut. <laughs> I love like the the directorial. <laughs> kind of. Take most of the congregation. We will do this in English. Yes. Um, although I was gonna speak in Korean, you know, I was totally you, ready for that. Could you do that? No, I don't want to. I'm just okay. kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't want okay. to. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, hi, my name is Jenny Lee. I currently go to Emmy Lizard High School. I'll be graduating this summer, and I'm going to U of A, and I'm gonna be majoring in psychology, arts. One of the ways that Steel Heights can support me is. I don't know, I guess I'm just really nervous about going into university. It's a new environment and whatnot. And I'm gonna try to be more extroverted. So pray for me that I can make new friends because I have the same friends my whole school year so far, like junior high. I have Adiola. I've known her since elementary school. She's still my friend. I need a new friend circle, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adiola's great. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah. Just like honing in. Though. Can you scooch just like this way? Just like this. Too much, too much. Yes. Oh man, we're That's dialing perfect. it in here. This okay. is great. Hi, Steel Heights. My name is Nanyendo Kasapu, and this year I will be graduating from Edmonton Christian High School. This fall, I will be attending the University of Alberta for Bachelor of Science in Nursing. One of the ways that Steel Heights can support me is to pray for me and to just 
help me as I journey my post-secondary education. Woo! Man, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know anybody who's gone to Harvard. <laughs> no, not yet. I haven't, I haven't come across that yet. Do you, okay. do you feel better now that your support Maris is here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maris is just like, I'm paying attention. She's going to Harvard. Yeah. Apparently so I'm going it's... to Harvard now, okay? <laughs> Did you say Harvard? Is that on like the West Coast? Yeah, it is okay. actually. Yeah. It's, I mispronounced it for a reason. <laughs> hey Seal Heights, my name is Quinn Mellings and this year I'm graduating from Outreach Programs. In the fall I'm looking forward to going back and upgrading a little more and then starting university. One of the ways that Seal Heights can support me this fall is to Continue praying for me to do well in school and supporting me overall. Thank you. You did great. You did Thank super you. swell. That was amazing. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you did great. Okay. Was having your support of Maris here, did that help? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Well, it's such a joy to see our graduates, or some of them anyhow. It seemed like the guys found out what Pastor Ben was doing to the girls, and they said, no, I'm not going to have any of that. I'm not going to get interviewed. You never know what may happen when you sit down in a chair with Pastor Ben with a camera in front of your face. Well, God bless you, graduates, and God bless Pastor Ben as well. So glad you could join us for worship here today, Still Heights. And for those of you who are visiting with us, a big warm welcome to you and everybody watching online. Big shout out to you guys as well. And if you're visiting with us today, we'd like to connect with you. And you could do that by just filling out a little connect card that's in the seat back pocket in front of you. And you can stop by after the service. I'll be at the Welcome Center. And uh, come on up, and I'd love to trade you your Connect card for a gift from us just to say thank you for coming to Still Heights. And I, I'll do my best to try and answer any questions you may have. If you're watching online, just check out our website at shbc.ca or call the office. Or even better yet, come for an on-site ex worship experience. We'd love to see you here uh, in the sanctuary on a Sunday morning as well. So God bless you as you worship today. Not a lot of announcements for church life today, but we are having a baptism class conversation with Pastor Bonnie July 9th after the service. Notice how I put that as singular, not plural, because we are going to be moving to one worship service this summer at 10 a.m. from July 2nd to September 3rd. And we're just going to all come into the sanctuary and just snuggle up beside each other. And um, if it's too crowded in here, we'll have uh, overflow seating up in the gym. And Pastor Ben will be the host up there for most Sundays, except for next Sunday because Pastor Ben is preaching. And um, so we will trust the Lord. We'll have a great time of worship through the summer. Just give everybody a little bit of a break and uh, head into the fall back into the 9 and 11 services. Well, that's it for church life. Wow, I, like, I feel like I should tell you a story or something. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not preaching today, so I'm just going to just take it easy and uh, let our, our uh, guest speaker today, who I'll introduce in a little while, uh, he'll do the speaking today from God's Word. Well, let's pray together for the offering. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you provide for us each and every day. You are our Heavenly Father, and you love us so much, God. So, Lord, would you take these gifts that uh, we are offering to you through in our, in our worship of giving today. May you use them. May you multiply them. May they be well stewarded, Lord, for your kingdom's sake. Lord, bless the financial ministry of Still Heights Baptist Church, and we ask for your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. 
let's sing shout to the Lord my Jesus my Savior Lord there is none like you all of my days I want to pray the wonders of Matila. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, Never cease to worship you. Shout, shout to the Lord of the air. Let us sing. Oh, power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the sea. We'll by the sound of your name. I sing, I sing for joy by the works of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Sing, my Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath Oh, the love, oh, that I am, never cease to worship you. Oh, shout, shout to the Lord, oh, the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will all at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hand forever, forever I love you forever. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Oh, nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Thank you, Lord, for the promises we have in you. And your promise is yes and amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Nice worship team. Well, here at Still Heights, it's been our tradition through the years to uh, open up the pulpit to lay people in our church that we feel have the spiritual gift of teaching. And uh, we've had some great messages through the years as uh, lay people bring the unique perspective on life and God's word to us. 
And so I've invited one of our members to come and share God's word with us today, and his name is Ben Weeb. Ben, why don't you come on up? Let's give him a hand of encouragement already. Now, Ben, you, you wear a few hats, don't you? Yes. Yes. So tell us a bit about yourself. You are married to... Alyssa, yeah. and I think she's in the back somewhere. Oh, there, there she, she is, is with our youngest, Bree. Yeah, and you have two other girls? Yes, Zoe and Josie. Zoe and Josie, yes. Yeah. And you've been here at Still Heights now for... Over two years, like two and a half years or so, I think. Yeah. Is that right, Alyssa? Am I getting that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys moved into the neighborhood and just came, checked us out. That's right, yeah. We attended uh, Central Baptist, McKernan Baptist in our older days in Edmonton. So when we moved into our house in April, on April 1st, 2020, and we found out that there was an NAB, ABA church right down the road, we were like, this is amazing. Yeah. What a great opportunity. And it is an amazing thing because actually the lead pastor from Central Baptist is here. He wants you to come back. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy oh, Putz Jeremy's is here, here today. Welcome, well, Jeremy funny. from Central Baptist. He's on a sabbatical. Let's give him a warm still oh, heights. Geez. Welcome. Tent. Hey, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so what do you do for work? Well, I'm a lawyer for the government. Okay. Yes. Like a crown prosecutor. Yes. So if we misbehave ourselves, we'll <laughs> no. be facing you? I don't need any more files. There's no okay. need to worry. Okay. Don't no worry. No more files. That would be a conflict of interest for sure. Yeah. Yes, no. And then just because you weren't, your life wasn't full enough during COVID, you decided instead of binge watching Netflix for two years, you decided to do something else. Yes, yes. I went to seminary and did a, like a master's degree there through the Kairos Project, which is All an right. amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah. that's a big accomplishment. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's pray for Ben and um, trust God's word to to our servant today. Lord, thank you for Ben. Thank you for his heart to uh, bless his church family. And Lord, we thank you for your word and for our sermon series on the Gospel of John. Bless Ben now, God, as he brings your word to us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. I'm going to preach this morning from John 14, 15 to 31. John 14, 15 to 31. The passage is up there on the slide, and I've entitled it, Jesus Bequeaths Peace. Before I begin, let's pray. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, please come and teach us this passage this morning. May we know you, and by knowing you, may we become like you. And may the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So I want to begin by talking to you about the importance of John 14, 15 to 31. So the first thing to know is that this passage is part of the farewell discourse, which runs from 1331 to 1633 in the Gospel of John. Now, farewell discourses are a common genre in the Old Testament. And the purpose is to help the audience when the speaker is gone. So Jesus is speaking to help his disciples while he is away. This means Jesus is talking directly to you if you are a disciple of Jesus, because Jesus is still away. The second thing that makes this passage important is that Right at the beginning of the farewell discourse, in 1331 to 33, Jesus says he's going to be glorified at once and he's going to leave the disciples soon. In the book of John, glorified means crucified. 
Jesus says he will be crucified at once because the process that led to Jesus' crucifixion began when Judas Iscariot left in 1330. Because Judas Iscariot left, Jesus was betrayed, arrested, tried, sentenced, and crucified. Also, there were 18 hours or less until Jesus' crucifixion based on the time markers at 1330, 1828, and 1914. So the farewell discourse is the words Jesus chose for his disciples just before he died. When someone is about to die, they talk about the things that are most important to them. So pay attention as I read, because Jesus' words are for you, and they are very important. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, because of course Judas Iscariot had left, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us? And not to the world. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. So, in verse 27, Jesus says he gives his disciples peace. In the Bible, if a human being has peace, their life is complete or whole. Nothing is missing or out of place. Peace is a universal human goal, but peace is also universally elusive. And the Bible says this is primarily because humanity's relationship with God is broken. Genesis 3 says humanity broke its relationship with God on purpose. Adam and Eve wanted to decide about right and wrong themselves and rule the world 
without God. This causes a lack of peace because without God, something is missing from every human life. And not just something. The person who is the cause of life and every good thing in life. To get peace, therefore, we must be reconnected to God. After all, being reconnected with God means life and everything we hold dear does not have to end with death. St. Augustine of Hippo says it this way in the Confessions. You have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. I want to talk to you about what peace looks like. In Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, one of my favorite scenes ever, Gandalf and Pippin are high up in the city during the Battle of Minas Tirith. Gondor has been soundly defeated by Mordor, and Gandalf and Pippin are behind a gate, safe only until the forces of Mordor break through. What's more, Gandalf's staff has been broken by the enemy, so Gandalf and Pippin begin to talk about death. Pippin says, I didn't think it would end this way. Gandalf replies, end? No, the journey doesn't end here. Death is just another path, one that we all must take. The gray rain curtain of this world rolls back and all turns to silver glass, and then you see it. Pippin says, what, Gandalf? See what, Gandalf? White shores, and beyond, a far green country under a swift sunrise. Pippin, well, that isn't so bad, Gandalf. No, no it isn't. The truly amazing thing about this scene isn't the words, it's Gandalf's and Pippin's faces. They are facing death, but their faces are full of joy. The key to peace that doesn't change regardless of circumstance is hope that is unshakable. Gandalf and Pippin were certain in that moment that death was not the end and that a greater heavenly country awaited them. Nothing can give us such a hope except God, because God is the creator and sustainer of all things. He alone has power over death. So Jesus gives his disciples peace by promising them a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. In verses 15 to 17, Jesus says that if his disciples love him, he will ask the Father, and the Father will give his disciples another advocate, the Spirit, to be with and in Jesus' disciples forever. Now, the Spirit is called a parakletos in Greek. Parakletos is translated advocate, counselor, helper, comforter, in different English translations of the Greek New Testament. A parakletos sometimes referred to a legal advocate or lawyer. But parakletos literally means called beside. And a parakletos is someone who comes to your side to help you in a difficult situation, and that help is comforting. That's why you get the broad range of translations in English. In verses 25 to 26, along with many other verses, which I've put on the slide there, John says the Holy Spirit gives us a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit says to Jesus' disciples the words of Jesus, which are the words of God the Father. So because the Holy Spirit lives in Jesus' disciples, 
Jesus' disciples are drawn into the eternal love and intimacy of the Trinity. This is why this passage talks so much about the relationship between Jesus' disciples, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God the Father in verses 16 to 23. Now, I want to pause our discussion of the passage. Earlier, I stated this passage was for you, and that's true. But I think it's common for Christians today, me included, to feel chronically disconnected from God and simultaneously to feel a strong desire for God. That's why you get over 10,000 results on Amazon.ca if you search for spiritual disciplines. Amazon literally does not give you a specific number of the books on spiritual disciplines, which are all about connecting with God. The problem is that no one can read all these books, and the number of books could give the impression that connecting with God is a complex enterprise that requires great learning. For me, this feels intimidating and off-putting. So I want to return to the basics of connecting with God. The doctrine of illumination says that if you read the, the Bible, the Holy Spirit will get the Father and the Son on the line, and the Trinity will speak to you. And you can get to know the Trinity. How does one participate in this amazing experience? J.I. Packer writes, the way to benefit fully from the Spirit's ministry of illumination is by serious Bible study, serious prayer, and serious response in obedience to whatever truths one has been shown already. The real problem with connecting with God is not that it's complex. It's that connecting with God is difficult to do consistently. Why? I'll give you three reasons from my life. First, spiritual warfare. Spiritual evil is trying to stop me from connecting with God. Second, idolatry causes me to prioritize things over my relationship with God. Third, busyness with good and important things like parenting and work, or unimportant things or bad things like watching TV. Before getting back to the passage, I leave you with a quote from G.K. Chesterton. The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. I want to restart our discussion of the passage. So far, we've discussed that Jesus gives his disciples peace, that peace requires reconnection with God, and that the Holy Spirit allows a relationship with God and peace. But there is a problem in this passage. Jesus says a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit is conditional on obedience. To paraphrase verses 15 to 17, 21 and 24, in part, if you love, if you obey Jesus, then you love Jesus, and if you love Jesus, then you will receive the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said his disciples had to obey to receive the Holy Spirit. And I know which command would have been ringing in the disciples' ears as Jesus said this, the one Jesus just said within the farewell discourse. A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, the world will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Love is defined by Jesus' actions in humbling himself 
and taking the lowly position of a servant to wash his disciples' feet and go to the cross. It means sacrificing for the benefit of another, regardless of what they have done. The Bible teaches that all human beings are incapable of loving as Jesus loved on this side of the resurrection from the dead. Also, I know this to be true because I'm not even close. Nevertheless, Jesus' disciples received the Holy Spirit. You can see that in chapter 20, verse 22. This is a mystery because Jesus' disciples did not love and obey Jesus in between 14, 15 to 31 and 20, 22. In fact, most of them betrayed and abandoned Jesus. So, how did Jesus' disciples receive the Holy Spirit? The passage does not answer this question directly, but it provides three clues. Jesus' advocacy, Jesus' death, and Jesus' obedience. It's all about Jesus. Together, these clues suggest Jesus' disciples received the Holy Spirit because Jesus' advocacy causes his obedience in dying on the cross to become his disciples' obedience. The first clue is Jesus' advocacy. In verse 16, Jesus says he asks the Father for the Holy Spirit for his disciples. In this way, Jesus acts as the first advocate in this passage, and the Holy Spirit is another advocate. So Jesus is making a case to the Father for the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. The second clue is Jesus' death. In verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. D.A. Carson says this should probably be translated as peace I bequeath to you. Hence the title of my sermon. Bequeath is a term for giving someone a gift through a will, which means the beneficiary does not get the gift until the person with the will dies. So verse 27 means the disciples will have peace because Jesus dies. The third clue is Jesus' obedience. In verses 30 and 31, Jesus implies his death will be an act of love and obedience to the Father. So Jesus will do what he says his disciples must do to receive the Holy Spirit. But how could Jesus' obedience become his disciples' obedience? In other words, what case could Jesus be making to the Father? It took me a long time to find a somewhat satisfactory explanation to this question. But one day in university, I had a breakthrough when I was reading a book by N.T. Wright. If Jesus is your king, if he is your king, then Jesus' decision to submit to the Father, ultimately by dying on the cross, is your decision. This is because you are bound by Jesus' decision. You cannot make a different decision than Jesus because Jesus is your king. For example, imagine you are Tumnus the Fawn, a citizen of Narnia, and a subject of King Aslan. Now, imagine there is an emperor beyond the sea. And imagine King Aslan decides he, and Narnia with him, will become subject to the emperor beyond the sea. This means that you, Tumnus the Fawn, have decided by default be to become subject to the emperor beyond the sea because you are the subject of King Aslan. King Aslan's decision is your decision. You can see this because the only way you could get 
out from under the thumb of the emperor beyond the sea is by ceasing to be the subject of King Aslan. In the same way, Jesus' decision to submit to the Father despite being offered torture and death in return for obedience is your decision. When Jesus offered the Father perfect obedience, you offered the Father perfect obedience. This reasoning is quite similar to the reasoning in Romans 5, 13 and 14 and Hebrews 7, 9 and 10. When the Bible wants to say that someone is a subject of King Jesus, it says that someone is in Christ. Check out 2 Samuel 20, verse 1, and 1 Kings 12, verse 16. So, as our beloved brother, Tim Keller, used to tell us, in Christ, you have died the death you should have died, and you have lived the life you should have lived. That is, a life in perfect submission to God the Father. This is true, not fiction. The key with this is to remember something that I got from our beloved brother, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. You do not have to perfectly obey Jesus to be Jesus' subject because Jesus forgives and recalls his disciples. Just think of the example of Peter in chapters 13, 18, and 21. This guy betrays Jesus. He curses him down the last time so that he won't be associated with Christ. But Christ forgives him and recalls him three times in chapter 21. The point of all of this is to remind you of two simple truths. When it comes to your ability to enter a relationship with God and have peace, your actions are irrelevant. And Jesus is essential. If Jesus is your king, Jesus' obedience means you will receive the Holy Spirit because Jesus' decision to submit to the Father's will, despite being offered torture and death, is your decision. If Jesus is not your king, then you cannot receive the Holy Spirit because you cannot and will not love your enemies to the standard set by Jesus when he died for all of us. So Jesus is a necessary condition when it comes to our ability to have a relationship with God and peace. Let us worship our King and our Savior, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother Ben, for the message. I'm going to ask you to stand as we sing God Will Make A Way. God will make a way Where there seems to be no way He works in ways we cannot see we make a way for me He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side When love and strength will join today He will make a way He will make a way One more time Oh God where we seem to be nowhere. He works, He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love, with love and strength for each new day. Make a 
God, we make our way. Oh God, we make our way. Where I seem to be, seem to be. He works, He works in ways we cannot see. He will make our way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love, with love and strength, for reaching you there. Probably you are here and uh, you have a request, you have a, a prayer. Maybe someone in your family is sick. Maybe you have been going through a hard time. I just want to give you a word of encouragement. God is going to make a way. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a can we sing louder one more time God we make oh God we make a way where I seem to be seems to be no way he works he works in ways we cannot see oh he Make a way He will be He will be my guide Hold me closely to His side With love With love and strength For each new day He will make a way He will make a way Amen always hope when we walk with Christ he is the truth the way and the life well God bless you still heights I hope that you have a fantastic week thank you Ben again for serving us and blessing us with the word God's sovereign grace is with us and as we obey him he meets us in that spacious place of his peace his joy well, I want to invite you to time of fellowship after the service. And if you have uh, prayer requests, uh, feel free to come up to the front, to the altar after we're dismissed, and there'll be someone here to pray for you. Still Heights, receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Go in his peace. God bless you. Love you guys. Bye for now. Hold me closely to his side.